The anime begins in a royal room, a 16-year-old prince of the Natra kingdom named Wayne. He is accompanied by Ninim, a white-haired girl who is his advisor and personal bodyguard. Four men were in front of them, who were high-ranking officials in his kingdom. They were all having a meeting, and the officials relayed the news from the imperial ambassador that the emperor had died. The officials said the news would cause conflict among other kingdoms to fight over the vacant imperial seat. But Wayne doesn't seem to care about the conflicts outside his kingdom. He looked confident and told the officials to focus more on taking care of the affairs within the kingdom. The officials who heard this were amazed to see him, who was so wise, and they felt sure that Prince Wayne would bring glory to their kingdom. However, it was only after the royal officials left the room that Wayne's true nature emerged. He shouted to express his feelings. He said he wanted to sell his kingdom, which he thought was hopeless. The scene then shows the Natra Kingdom, located at the continent's end. The kingdom has a short springtime, while the wintertime is very long. Its natural condition is only filled with barren fields and rocky mountains, so it is difficult to be used as agricultural land. Moreover, the population is not up to 500 people, so it is difficult for Wayne to make his kingdom progress due to poor resources. Finally, Ninim reminded Wayne not to show his childish nature. He turned out to like to complain about his heavy duty as the leader of his kingdom. He intends to strengthen his kingdom just so that his kingdom has a higher value when sold, and then he can retire in peace. Suddenly, Wayne's little sister, Felania, walked into his room. She came to tell him that their father's condition had improved. She apparently wanted to take her father for a walk outside the kingdom. However, her wish was rejected by Wayne for security reasons, because the neighboring kingdom, the Martin Kingdom, intends to attack their kingdom and can come anytime. The scene then shows a map showing the Natra Kingdom and the Martin Kingdom. At first, the kingdoms of Natra and Martin had a good relationship. Then the Martin Kingdom found gold resources in their territory and made the kingdom's economy start to grow rapidly. However, it caused royal officials to commit corruption and begin to invade other weak kingdoms for resources, including the Natra Kingdom. Wayne added that his current kingdom did not have the money to hire a strong empire warrior and only had ordinary royal troops. But, according to Felania, the royal troops had a high fighting spirit. They even swore they would fight to the death under Wayne's banner. Unfortunately, Wayne didn't like seeing the spirit of his own royal troops. It turned out that he had already thought about the expensive costs of war and was reluctant to spend money from the royal treasury. Suddenly, Felania held Wayne's hand and wished her older brother a victory in battle. Hearing that, he felt bad for his little sister, and he finally decided to face the Martin Kingdom and went straight to the battlefield. Actually, his real plan was to attack briefly and then make peace to reduce the kingdom's expenses due to war. The scene then changes to a barren desert with rocky hills that become a battlefield between the Natra Kingdom and the Martin Kingdom. Wayne was seen on his horse. He looked at the enemy troops, which totaled 7,000, while his own royal army numbered 6,000 people. Then, he stood in front of his army. He looked at his troops, who looked nervous because this was their first battle. Then, he delivered a short speech before starting the war, and it turned out that his speech could burn the spirits of his soldiers, who previously looked nervous. On the other hand, the war generals of the Martin Kingdom did the same in front of his troops, who looked more prepared than the Natra Kingdom's troops. Shortly after, the battle between them began. Wayne had arranged a strategy and ordered his troops to focus on defending and relying on counterattacks. As he had predicted, the Martin Kingdom's troops attacked through the middle. However, he was a little surprised by the conditions on the battlefield because his soldiers managed to hold back and instead managed to suppress the Martin Kingdom's troops. On the other hand, the captains of the Martin Kingdom troops then reported to their generals that their team had lost to the Natra Kingdom troops. Meanwhile, the general of the Natra Kingdom reported to Wayne and said that the Natra Kingdom's troops had succeeded in repelling the Martin Kingdom. This was possible thanks to Wayne, who previously sent the Natra Kingdom troops to train with the Empire Warriors, who were the strongest troops on the continent. The Natra Kingdom troops have war techniques superior to the Martin Kingdom troops. Wayne himself did not think that his actually perfunctory decision was able to achieve good results at this time. But it seems the fighting spirit of the Natra Kingdom's troops began to slacken until they were able to be pushed out by the Martin Kingdom's troops. Because even though they excel in fighting techniques, their mentality is still not fully prepared to face the atmosphere on a fierce battlefield. Hearing this, the general of the Natra Kingdom troops advised Prince Wayne to withdraw from the battlefield, and he agreed. But it reached the ears of the enemy, and the general of the Martin Kingdom army did not waste the opportunity to target the head of the Prince of Natra Kingdom. In fact, the generals of the Martin Kingdom came down directly to chase Wayne and intended to kill him. But Wayne had already predicted this and had prepared an ambushing army of archer soldiers led directly by his advisor, Ninim. The general of the Martin Kingdom, who was not prepared for the troops' presence, was shocked and panicked. He was injured while his troops seemed to be in disarray. At the same time, Ninim went down directly to finish off the Martin Kingdom's remaining troops and give the Martin Kingdom's generals a chance to surrender. However, the general refused to give up and made her behead him. Finally, the general's death marked the Natra Kingdom's victory over the Martin Kingdom. 
The next day, Wayne and Nina meet with the generals and royal officials. The officials asked what the next step should be. However, Wayne said he found it very troublesome as his troops must have been drained by the war. But because he was afraid of being considered a weak leader, he finally carelessly decided to seize the gold mine of the Martin Kingdom. He hoped his royal officials would reject his decision, but his officials agreed and said that his decision was brilliant. What's more, the Natra Kingdom's troops could easily seize the Martin Kingdom's gold mines, thus giving them advantages. The next day, Wayne was resigned to the victory achieved by his kingdom. He plans to maximize the results they get from the war. However, a gold miner came and reported that the gold content in the mine was almost depleted. Wayne, who heard the news, was shocked. However, he suddenly came up with a devious idea to resell the gold mine to the Martin Kingdom. Because according to the gold miner's report, the Martin Kingdom didn't know that the gold content was running low. Ninim just sighed resignedly, hearing Wayne's sleazy strategy. Even so, she still supported his decision and advised him to tighten the guard at the gold mine because of the possibility that the Martin Kingdom would reclaim it. It turned out that what Ninim said was true. The Martin Kingdom sent 30,000 troops to reclaim the gold mine, while the Natra Kingdom only had 5,000 troops to guard the gold mine. Soon after, Wayne devised a strategy to focus on defending against the onslaught of attacks from the Martin Kingdom troops, because according to him, the Martin Kingdom would find it difficult to maintain that many troops for a long time, because they definitely need food resources and money for their soldiers. So if the Natra Kingdom's troops could withstand the attacks of their soldiers for one month, then it was likely that they would propose peace talks as he expected. Shortly after, a war over the mines began, and the advantage was actually on the side of the Natra Kingdom. In fact, the war general of the Martin Kingdom, named Drawood, didn't seem to believe the situation on the battlefield. It was all thanks to Wayne's genius tactic of utilizing the mine's geographical contours of rocky hills as a stronghold for his troops, while the only way for the Martin Kingdom's troops to attack was only to pass through a narrow and steep path. Thus, the Martin Kingdom's troops could not maximize many troops and were forced to fight separately. This makes them easy targets for the Natra Kingdom troops, who can defeat them little by little. Wayne had anticipated an attack from behind by scraping the cliff wall so that it could not be climbed and passed by the Martin Kingdom's troops. It didn't stop there. He was not only focused on defending. He had already thought of a way to launch a counterattack. He ordered his troops to guerrilla at night and set fire to the tents of the Martin Kingdom troops. Due to an unexpected attack, the Martin Kingdom's troops were thrown into chaos. This obviously made General Drawood angry and annoyed at Wayne. The scene then shows Wayne, who seems relaxed in his tent because his strategy runs smoothly without any problems. Moreover, the Natra Kingdom's troops could withstand the onslaught from the Martin Kingdom for more than two weeks. In fact, the mentality of the Natra Kingdom's troops is still high because they always win the battle. On the other hand, the mentality of the Martin Kingdom's troops was getting weaker as time passed. But Wayne had predicted that the Martin Kingdom would not simply retreat, considering they had spent a lot of money in this battle. It turned out that what Wayne predicted came true. General Drawood sends one of his commanders named Logan to meet him and make a peace treaty. However, Logan instead bullied him into withdrawing from the mine and bearing all the losses the Martin Kingdom had caused by the war. Of course, Wayne refused. He didn't seem afraid at all and instead looked relaxed. But when Logan was about to leave, he insulted Ninim by calling her a descendant of the slaves. He said that Wayne didn't deserve to be next to lowly people like her. Wayne clearly looked very angry because of his words. Fortunately, Wayne could still restrain himself and let him go with a smile. The scene then shows the atmosphere in General Drawood's tent. The battle that had lasted for three weeks seemed to have exhausted Drawood's patience. He vacated the base and mobilized his entire army to attack the mine with full force, hoping that his final attack would break through the Natra Kingdom's defenses and reclaim the gold mine. But shortly after the war took place, suddenly, a soldier came and brought the chief commander Logan. As a result, Drawood was surprised to see his commander's head lying on his desk, but the soldier carrying Logan's head jumped and attacked him. The soldier killed Drawood's bodyguards, leaving only him. When Drawood was paralyzed, the soldier opened his war helmet, and it turned out that the soldier was Wayne. Drawood was surprised and didn't expect that Wayne would take advantage of the void in the Martin Kingdom's headquarters to attack him directly. Because the soldiers of the Martin Kingdom should have filled the path from the mine, Wayne would definitely not be able to cross it. But as it turned out, he built a shortcut from the direction of the mountain and took advantage of a cavern that had been used for mining routes that were no longer in use. That way, he could reach Drawood's base without being noticed by the Martin Kingdom's troops. After that, he killed Drawood and said that yesterday they had insulted Ninim. He confirmed that he would kill anyone who dared to insult Ninim. Finally, Wayne won the battle again. The scene changes at night at the Natra Kingdom Palace. They held a lavish banquet celebrating their victory and defending the gold mine. All the officials and generals of the kingdom praised Wayne for his successful tactics. Shortly after that, Ninim came and asked him to talk one-on-one. -on -one. She reported to him that the Martin Kingdom's capital had been taken by another kingdom and the Martin King had been killed. 
Wayne, who heard this, bowed low because he again failed to make a profit by selling his gold mines to the Martin Kingdom. But she brought good news. She gave a report of a gold miner who had just discovered a new gold source in the mine that could cover the losses due to war. On the other hand, an imperial ambassador named Brandel is shown. She seemed to be checking the files about Wayne. She looked surprised because it turned out that Wayne had studied at the Imperial Military Academy and always got the highest marks. But the Empire seemed to cover it up and crossed out his name. They seemed embarrassed that their noble was lost to a prince from a poor kingdom. Time has passed, and the scene shows Wayne dreaming about his former life at the Military Academy. Wayne and Ninim were seen having dinner with their fellow Military Academy students. The first person to be introduced was Lo, a blonde-haired girl. She likes to make noise and do reckless things, so she often gets her friends into trouble at the academy because of her actions. For example, thwarting the smuggling of illegal goods, then getting into a commotion with bandits and other reckless things. Wayne advised Lo to reduce her reckless actions, but she rejected his suggestion and said she would never change. Afterward, Wayne woke up from his sleep. He was in his study. He told Ninim his dream and made them both wonder what the fate of their friends would be like now. That day, they were waiting for the Imperial Princess, who was scheduled to visit the Natra Kingdom, to meet them. The Empire seemed to be seeking an alliance due to their chaotic internal state, as their prince was fighting over the vacant Imperial seat after the death of the previous Emperor. However, Ninim found it strange that the visiting prince was not their Imperial Prince but the Imperial Princess. Not long after, the Imperial Princess arrived at the Natra Kingdom Palace. She appears to be present with a dozen Imperial delegates. Wayne, Felania, and Ninim welcomed them with an official royal ceremony. He warmly welcomed the arrival of the Imperial Princess, who seemed to cover half of her face with a black cloth. After that, the Imperial Advisor who accompanied the Imperial Princess said the purpose of their arrival was to offer an engagement between the Imperial Princess and Prince Wayne. Wayne, Felania, and Ninim looked surprised, but before he had time to answer the offer, the Imperial Princess put herself back on while taking off her face covering. As it turned out, the Imperial Princess was low, his friend back at the Academy. The scene changed and showed Wayne returning to his study. He looked panicked and thought this whole thing was a trap because they still didn't think Lo was the Imperial Princess. That was because she had previously claimed to be the daughter of an ordinary village aristocrat, and Wayne was confused about how to respond to the offer of engagement. Considering that Lo was a girl who loved to stir up trouble with all her reckless ideas, Wayne thought that she might have other plans that she was hiding. Time passed, and now Wayne and Lo were having dinner. He tried to investigate the true intention of Lo's arrival. She said she was very impressed and became interested in him because of the prince's achievements in his victory against the Madron Kingdom. However, he looked unsure of her answer and felt that her words were mere nonsense. But, he felt she didn't seem to be able to tell her true intentions in front of so many people. Therefore, Wayne said that he would give her a gift in the form of winter clothes suitable for wearing in the Natra Kingdom. Not long after, the palace guards delivered the gifts that Wayne had promised Lo. They brought the gifts in the two large chests into her room. But as it turned out, the contents were not gifts but Wayne and Ninim. When they met in person, the three of them let go of their formal attitude and behaved like old friends. Lo then said that she was very happy to see them again. They were joking. After their nostalgic moment was enough, Lo called Brandel and asked her to stand guard at her door so no one would overhear their conversation. Finally, Lo said the real purpose of her coming to the Netra Kingdom. She wants to ask Wayne for help to overthrow the three Imperial Princes who are his siblings, so she can later ascend to the throne to become Emperor. However, Wayne seemed hesitant to accept her request for help because he felt that the Netra Kingdom had no power against the Empire. Lo admitted this, but then she explained that the current state of the Empire was divided due to the conflict between the three princes, so the Netra Kingdom's chance to win against the Empire is still open. Lo continued to say that she was fed up with seeing the state of the Empire caused by her three older brothers. To end it, she finally decided to participate in the struggle for the throne of the Empire. However, since no one in the Empire considered her a worthy candidate for Emperor, she couldn't help but seek outside help. And the most appropriate people to turn to for help were Wayne and Ninim. Laughing, she told Wayne, isn't that an interesting plan? As it turned out, Lo's character, who liked to do reckless things since the time she was still a student at the Academy, had not changed. Wayne did not deny that her plan was indeed interesting. However, now he has a big responsibility as a prince and leader of a kingdom, so he couldn't accept her risky plan, as the Natra Kingdom might become an enemy of the Empire. Then, Wayne and Ninim said goodbye to leave Lo's room, but she seemed to have another strategy to persuade him to help her. The scene moves and shows the figure of Nanaki, who is Felania's personal bodyguard. She came to meet Wayne and Ninim and asked Ninim to meet Felania because she felt something strange about Felania's attitude. As a result, Ninim came to meet Felania, who did look upset. Then she explained that she had been worried and afraid since her older brother Wayne led the kingdom. It makes her feel lonely, especially now that Wayne is likely to get married. But Ninim explained that Wayne would always love her even though he was married. Ninim emphasized that his attitude would never change because Felania was a very valuable figure to Wayne. 
Hearing that, Felania started to feel a little. But then Felania asked how Ninim felt about Wayne's engagement because she felt that the most suitable partner for him was Ninim, and even she had hoped that one day Wayne would marry Ninim. But it seems like Ninim is self-aware. She felt someone from the slave clan, like herself, was not worthy of being side by side with a royal prince. Although she is not married, she is happy because she can always be by his side. Ninim described herself as the heart of his heart and was always protected by him. However, Felania didn't seem to understand what she meant. After that, Ninim changed the subject by saying that Felania's learning achievement had recently declined. She suggested that Felania study with Wayne, and her suggestion was approved by Felania, who looked happy. In the evening, Lo, Ninim, and Brandel are shown bathing together in a hot spring pool. They began to talk about the past when Brendel asked their story, from which it was revealed that Lo had been chased by the prince of Ancadol kingdom named Gerald. Even today, she often gets letters and gifts from him and hopes that the news of her engagement to the prince of Natra kingdom makes him stop pursuing her. On the other hand, it seems that Wayne accompanied Felania to study by chance and studied the history of the Ancadol kingdom. Wayne explained that the Ancadol kingdom had a king dubbed the biggest sycophant on the continent. The nickname was born when the kingdoms built alliances against the empire that invaded their territory. Shortly after, the Ancadol kingdom became the only kingdom subject to the empire, and because of the Ancadol kingdom's betrayal, the empire could conquer other kingdoms. In fact, the empire executed all kings who joined the alliance, and only the king of Ancadol kingdom was allowed to remain in power and even got the title of Marquis by the empire. Wayne further explained that the prince of Ancadol kingdom has a character like his father. He is referred to as a prince who is cheap, despotic, and weak in military matters. Suddenly, a soldier came to report to Wayne that he found illegal weapons that had entered the kingdom. Apparently, the weapons were a new model and definitely not made by the Natra kingdom. Wayne then thought they might have something to do with Lowe's plan. On the other hand, she seemed to daydream while recalling her memories from her academy days. There Lowe felt that Wayne could figure out the problem, even though, at that time, he didn't know she was the imperial princess. He knew that Lo always wanted to make big things, but her family always prevented her because she was a woman, and she was fed up with it. Wayne then advised Lo to fight against the stigma by breaking down these deep-rooted thoughts and cultures so that Lo could change her family's and society's views. She smiled at his suggestion and asked him to help her if she decided to fight the stigma in the future. Wayne seemed to accept her request, albeit half-heartedly. The scene changed. The morning sun seemed to shine on Lo, who was still sleeping. Suddenly, Brandel woke her, saying she got an invitation to drink tea from Wayne. But Lo felt strange about it because she knew that Wayne wasn't the type who liked to make small talk. She guessed he wanted to investigate something from her, though she finally agreed to the tea invitation. While they were drinking tea together, Lo said that she would return to the Empire for failing to convince Wayne to help her usurp the Imperial throne. But he didn't believe her words because he seemed to know her other intentions. He realized that a split between the three Imperial princes would inevitably lead to rebellions from the occupied kingdoms. So her arrival to the Natra Kingdom was one of them to prevent the rebellion from happening. Wayne found out about this thanks to the discovery of contraband weapons yesterday. According to Wayne, Lo bought the weapons from the West and brought them to the Natra Kingdom in preparation for the countermeasures against the rebellion. However, he found that the kingdom that sold the weapons sent weapons to the three princes in equal amounts. Thus, the map of the three princes' power is equally strong, meaning the war will last for a long time. This gave the kingdoms colonized by the Empire an opening to break away from the Empire. Furthermore, Wayne knew Lo had warned her three older siblings about this. However, her words were ignored by her three older siblings because of her position. She was only the youngest daughter, and according to them, she was incompetent. That's what caused her to be desperate to take part in the struggle for the power of the Empire because Lo wanted to prove her words about the rebellion of the kingdoms occupied by the Empire. Not only that, but Wayne knew that one of the kingdoms suspected of carrying out a rebellion was the Ancadol Kingdom. So another reason Lo made the Natra Kingdom her stopover was because the Natra Kingdom was in the Ancandol Kingdom's territory. Lo was amazed after hearing Wayne's precise and accurate analysis. Although only with little evidence, he could explain in detail the true purpose of her arrival. Lo didn't even deny his analysis. She added that she would be the bait for the rebel empire. If she was caught by one of the rebellious kingdoms, then that kingdom could easily kill the three princes and take the pinnacle of the empire's power. Lo's target is the Ancadol Kingdom because they have a prince who really likes her, namely Geralt. If he finds out about the news of Lo and Wayne's engagement, then she is sure that the Ancadol Kingdom will definitely attack the Natra Kingdom, and, like it or not, Wayne must be prepared to fight them. It turned out that Wayne had apparently sent a letter to the Ancadol Kingdom containing information that the Imperial Princess was visiting the Natra Kingdom and would visit the Ancadol Kingdom. He did this solely to prevent his kingdom from fighting against the Ancadol Kingdom. He let Lo find her own way to prevent the rebellion, since he didn't want to be pitted against the Ancadol Kingdom as she had planned. She confidently said that the Ancadol Kingdom might soon attack the Natra Kingdom for her. 
Suddenly, Ninim came with a panicked face and said that Gerald, the Prince of Ancadol Kingdom, had arrived at the palace and wanted to meet Wayne. As a result, Wayne went with Ninim to meet Gerald, and his arrival was to pick up Lo. It seems that he has read Wayne's letter. Maybe because he can't wait for Lo, he came to the Natra Kingdom to meet her. Gerald said he wanted to see Lo, but Wayne asked him to rest first while preparing. Wayne said that he would prepare a banquet for Gerald and Lo. The arrogant Gerald agreed with his words. Suddenly, Wayne looked annoyed and dizzy because he didn't expect Gerald to come alone to his kingdom. Ninim was annoyed by Gerald's disrespectful behavior and disrespect for Wayne, the host. Wayne told Ninim to lower her emotions, and she sat on his lap so that her emotions subsided. She thought Lo was deliberately trying to pit Natra and Ankadol against each other and that Wayne, who already knew that, obviously wouldn't let that happen. Wayne will try to unite Lo and Gerald, and if necessary, he will get them married. Because if Lo becomes Gerald's wife, she can influence him to fight his father and stop the rebellion. On the other hand, Lo knew the intention behind her dinner with Gerald. She clearly wouldn't fall into Wayne's plan. In fact, she seemed very sure that Wayne would join her fight against the Ankadol kingdom. The scene changed and showed the dinner that had been held. Wayne seemed to praise Gerald sky high. He advised Gerald and Lo to announce their marriage. Gerald looked proud because of his praise, but Lo said that she would announce the marriage if Wayne wanted to come with her to the Empire. It seemed that Lo was at her wit's end to drag Wayne into her troubles. Meanwhile, Gerald, who saw their closeness, felt that they had known each other for a long time. He asked, and Wayne answered that Lo was his friend at the Academy. Hearing that, Gerald continued to ask what Wayne was like when he was at the Academy. Wayne was humble and replied that he only spent his time in the Academy learning to use the sword. Already drunk from drinking too much, Gerald challenged Wayne to a sword. He seemed to want to show off his abilities in front of Lo. Wayne actually seemed afraid of a challenge from Gerald. It turned out that he wasn't afraid of losing but that Gerald would find out that Wayne was fighting him carelessly and deliberately succumbing. Then the match started. Wayne planned to make the result a draw because he didn't want to look weak in front of everyone. However, Wayne had to make Gerald look great, so Gerald and Lo's wedding plans went smoothly. Wayne had even been imagining how to fight Gerald until he finally got tired and dropped their swords together. At first, Wayne's plan seemed to be working, but at the last moment, Gerald suddenly tripped over his feet, causing Wayne to seem to have won the match. Seeing that Wayne was panicked with such a result he dropped his sword as if the result of the match was a draw. Suddenly, Gerald got up and attacked him, obviously panicking Wayne, because if he was hit by Gerald's attack, then Gerald's actions would be considered cowardly act by everyone. As a result, he pretended to dodge the attack by accident to maintain Gerald's dignity. However, Gerald apparently kept going until he broke the balcony door and fell off the palace's balcony. Everyone there panicked and went to the palace's balcony. Even Ninim jumped down to check Gerald's condition, which turned out to be dead. News of his death had reached his father, Grenesh Ankadol. According to the news, Gerald's bodyguards and entourage have been detained by the Natra Kingdom. Hearing that, Grenesh guessed that Gerald must have been killed. He feels that Wayne and Lo have something to do with the death of his child. The scene then switches to Ninim and Wayne, who look very panicked because all their plans failed miserably because Gerald died because of his stupidity. The Netra Kingdom will most likely be at war against the Ankadol Kingdom. Shortly after, Lo came to see them. She said that she had given up on usurping the throne of the Empire and was more focused on the possibility of rebellion. For that, she asked Wayne for help to prevent a rebellion, and Wayne, who was already desperate, finally wanted to help her. They devised a strategy to fight the Ankadol Kingdom and its allies. Wayne knew he was short of troops, which made it clear that he would lose. Therefore, he had the plan to be able to fight the Ankadol Kingdom without the need to be involved in a large-scale war but was able to make them admit the plan of rebellion. A few days later, Wayne arrived at the palace of Ankadol Kingdom along with four bodyguards. He came bringing Prince Gerald's body. While the King of Greenwich seemed surprised by his arrival, he was emotional and angry at Wayne over the suspicion that Gerald had been killed by him. But Wayne invited Grenesh to talk privately, then he said that the Imperial Princess, Lo, already knew about Grenesh's rebellion plan. Hearing this, Grenesh, who looked angry, was shocked and scared, but Wayne continued to say that he didn't need to worry because Prince Gerald was already dead. Grinch didn't seem to understand what Wayne meant, then Wayne continued to explain that he wanted to make Grenesh make Gerald a scapegoat. Grenesh must announce that Gerald is a traitor who wants to overthrow his throne. Gerald is the one who spearheaded the rebellion against the Empire. Given Gerald's bad reputation in the Empire, even the scenario Wayne described would be easy for people to believe. Wayne continued to speak. He said that if Grenesh agreed to the scenario and submitted all evidence of the rebellion, Lo would reduce his sentence by only cashing in on his royal income. Wayne added that Grenesh should ask for forgiveness in front of Lo, which was currently in the Natra Kingdom. Even Grenesh, already very desperate, couldn't help but accept his scenario plan. The scene then shows Wayne and his four bodyguards looking for lodging. Suddenly, the atmosphere around them was silent, and even he knew something was wrong. Sure enough, they were attacked by the ambush troops, so they had to fight them. 
However, the genius Wayne again realized that it was just a trap the enemy had prepared. He managed to avoid a sudden attack from behind. The person who attacked him was a man armed with a spear. He looked relaxed, avoiding attacks from the leg. He said that he knew those who attacked him were spies from the west, not on Grenesh's orders. This obviously surprised the man, but he continued to attack Wayne. However, Wayne seemed to be able to dodge his attacks with ease. He continued to say that he knew the West planned the rebellion and invited Grenesh to be involved. He knew that the West was planning to kill Grenesh and eliminate all evidence of rebellion. Therefore, Wayne had placed his trusted confidants on guard inside the Grenesh palace. The scene shows that the person who brought the news of Geralt's death to Grenesh was Nanaki, Felania's personal bodyguard. She was ordered by Wayne to save Grenesh from the assassination plot as well as guard the evidence of the rebellion. Then, what Wayne predicted came true. Two Western spies were seen trying to find evidence of rebellion in one of the rooms in the Grenache Palace. Luckily, Nanaki came in an ambush and easily killed them. The scene returns to Wayne's fight against a man. After being warned that the plot to steal evidence of the rebellion failed, the man lost his temper and continued to attack Wayne to kill him. But Wayne is not only good at strategizing, he is good at fighting. Wayne was seen taking out the kunai hidden in his arm and throwing it at the man. While throwing, Wayne said that the kunai was poisonous, causing him to lose focus and quickly dodge. However, with lightning speed, Wayne counterattacked and slashed at the man's arm until his arm was severed. Having been cornered and knowing that they would not be able to win, the western spies fled from Wayne's presence. But it didn't stop there. Wayne heard the sound of horse steps which were none other than Grenish and his bodyguards. Wayne's guards said that Grenish seemed to have broken his agreement. Hearing this, Wayne said his backup plan was to run. However, Wayne wouldn't have been called if he didn't prepare cunning tricks for his enemies. He not only ran away, but he had prepared hundreds of Natra Kingdom troops at the border so that Grenesh, who was chasing him, was shocked and panicked. The scene then showed Wayne, Lo, and Ninim having a discussion, where he had already predicted all the possibilities. He said his deal with Grenesh only had a 50% chance of succeeding. So if Grenesh tried to capture him, he would only bring a few troops to make it easier to move, so he would certainly be able to fight Grenesh and his bodyguards. That way, he could defeat Grenish without needing to deploy thousands of troops. Soon after, Wayne added to his plan, involving Lo and the Imperial troops to help capture Grenish. As a result, even Grenish could not move when he saw the Imperial troops, then he was captured and brought to meet Lo, the Imperial Princess. The scene switches to Grenish confronting Lo, Wayne, and the Governor of the Empire. Grenish looks terrified as he continues to look for ways to avoid the punishment that will be given. He made Wayne a scapegoat. Then, he questioned what Wayne meant by placing the Nantra Kingdom's troops in the territory that was the territory of the Empire. He accused Wayne of an invasion of the region. Grenish hopes that he can escape punishment after cornering Wayne. But the Imperial Governor answered all his questions and accusations against Wayne. He said that it was only natural for Natra's troops to be in the Empire's territory because they would conduct training with the Imperial troops. The answer was completely unexpected for Grenish. He was even unable to speak. Once again, Wayne proved his genius by predicting his accusations, so Wayne ordered Ninim to meet the Imperial Ambassador to Natra to send a letter requesting joint military training with the Imperial troops. Grenesh, who had been cornered, realized that Wayne had carefully planned out, even before Wayne came to visit his palace. He finally gave in and begged Princess Lo for mercy. The following day, at the Natra Kingdom, Lo is seen talking with Ninim. Lo said she would return to the Empire and cancel her engagement plan with Wayne. She reasoned that she would freely spread her influence in the Empire if single. But Ninim looks doubtful about her decision and asks how she feels about Wayne. Hearing this, she was embarrassed and rejected him. Hearing that, Ninim didn't believe her words. Finally, Lo confessed that she liked Wayne but didn't want to say why she called off her engagement to Wayne. After that, the scene shifts to showing Lo meeting Wayne. She was still questioning why he had planned such a strategy to defeat Grenesh. Whereas according to her, Wayne could do something as simple as kidnapping Grenesh and torturing him. Then, Wayne replied that it would be easier for Lo to manage Grenish if they mentally destroyed Grenish first. There, she realized that everything Wayne had done was only for her. She realized that he did it as a form of his promise to her back at the academy. Finally, Lo left the Natra Kingdom feeling relieved. It shows why she cancelled her engagement with Wayne because she admires and respects Wayne and Ninim's relationship. The relationship of an honorable royal prince, but still trusting a girl from the slaves who are always looked down upon. For now, she feels it is inappropriate to be side by side with Wayne and Ninim, and she will try to establish herself in her own way. Time passed, and Wayne and Ninim were seen on their way to the Cavern Kingdom to fulfill the delegation's invitation and attend the Spirit Festival event there. The Spirit Festival is a religious festival held every early spring. The Cavern Kingdom wants to establish good relations with the Natra Kingdom by inviting Prince Wayne to their kingdom. But he looked worried when he left his kingdom for the West because there might still be remnants of the Martin Kingdom's soldiers trying to kill him. On the other hand, Wayne didn't like seeing Ninim dyeing her hair black. She dyed her hair because people in the West were racist towards slaves like her. 
Long story short, she warned Wayne not to mess around at the Cavern Kingdom later, and he agreed to her. His bodyguards then reported that they had entered the mining area of the Natra Kingdom. He decided to stop by and check the conditions there. Wayne looked happy when he reported that gold mining activities were running smoothly. However, because one of the Natra generals named Hagard had just retired, Wayne looked worried because there was no substitute authority figure guarding the mines. Moreover, he received reports that several Natra nobles wanted to rebel. On the other hand, a group of people in robes were seen discussing how to overthrow the Wayne family from the throne of the Natra kingdom. It seemed they would use the moment of Wayne's departure to the Cavern Kingdom and General Hagard's retirement to start a rebellion. The next day, they sent troops to kill Wayne, who was on his way to the Cavern Kingdom. The assassination squad separated Wayne from his bodyguards. As a result, only Ninim was now escorting him. Wayne couldn't help but think quickly to get out of the situation. Then, he told Ninim to take their horse carriage to the headquarters of the remaining Martin Kingdom troops. He seemed to want to bet on using the remaining Martin Kingdom troops to help him. The bet was successful. It looked like a group of soldiers arrived in front of his horse carriage and attacked the assassins chasing him. As a result, the assassination squad decided to withdraw. Afterward, Wayne introduced himself and asked to meet Prince Helmut. The scene changed by showing Wayne and Ninim brought by Martin's troops to their secret base. But then, a girl named Zeno appears, Helmut's right-hand man. She said that Helmut could not see Wayne because he was sick. She continued to explain that Helmut's face was burned by the Cavern Kingdom's soldiers when they invaded the capital. It made the rest of the Martin Kingdom soldiers have a bitter grudge against the Cavern Kingdom. Wayne said that he was on his way to the Cavern Kingdom. Hearing this, Zeno pointed her sword at him and threatened to kill him because he thought the Natra Kingdom would have an alliance with the Cavern Kingdom. Suddenly, Wayne offered Zeno to accompany him to the Cavern Kingdom because he guessed that the assassination squad was there. If his guess is correct, he will choose to form an alliance with the Martin army. Then, he continued to explain that in the Cavern Kingdom, there would be a gathering of important people, one of which was a group called the Sacred Elite. He said that Zeno had the opportunity to ask these people for help for the Martin army. Finally, she agreed to the offer. Long story short, Wayne arrived at the Cavern Kingdom. He ordered Ninim and Zeno to look for important information while he and his guards met the King of Cavern, Orlas. However, while on his way to meet Orlas, Wayne met a Cavern general who insulted him as a scumbag. However, he didn't seem to care much about the ridicule. Instead, he paid more attention to the general's subordinates. Soon after, he saw that the general's subordinates had wounds on their arms, which were in the same position as the wounds of one of the assassin squads that attacked him yesterday. As a result, he warned his guards to always be careful of these people. On the other hand, Zeno was looking for information with Ninim. Suddenly, she looked furious and was about to kill someone who had just gotten off the horse carriage, but Ninim stopped her. Then Zeno explains that the person is named Holonui. He was once one of the top brass of the Martin Kingdom who betrayed and caused the Martin capital to be controlled by the Cavern Kingdom. Ninim understands her feelings, but Ninim advises her to devise a more mature plan for revenge. The scene then turned back to Wayne, who met King Ordelas. It looks like King Ordelas is so warm to welcome his arrival. Apparently, the king has other intentions for him. Then, Wayne was invited by King Ordelas to meet with the Sacred Elite group. Apparently, he invited Wayne to Cavern to join as a member of the Sacred Elite. Because Wayne has the lineage of one of the loyal followers of the Levithia religion, it is suitable to enter the sacred elite group. The scene moved and showed Wayne and Ninim talking. Wayne said he would accept the offer to enter as a member of the sacred elite so that he could increase his connections to western countries. The next day, Wayne invites Zeno to meet one of the members of the sacred elite named Kodmilia. After chatting for a while, Kodmilia finally proposed to Wayne the conditions to join as a member of the sacred elite. She continued to say that the condition was that the Natra Kingdom had to eliminate the Martin Kingdom's remaining soldiers. Zeno who heard the condition was almost provoked, while Wayne decided to think about the answer first. On the other hand, Ninim was monitoring General Cavern's meeting with Holonui. She tried to translate their lip language, and she looked surprised. As it turned out, they were planning a rebellion in the Natra Kingdom. The scene switches to the man from the Western Spy who had attacked Wayne while in the Ankadal Kingdom and turned out to have a relationship with Kedmelia. It seemed they were impatiently waiting for Wayne's decision this time. The next day, Philania is studying with her teacher about King Ordelas. The teacher explained that Ordelas was one of the sacred elites who held the highest power in the Levethian religion. But the problem is, in the Cavern Kingdom, officials are chosen only from the royal lineage and don't care about their suitability to lead. Moreover, the Cavern Kingdom was extremely racist towards the poor and slaves. Even its officials had a tradition of slaughtering slaves. She clearly looked very scared to hear her teacher's explanation. The day turned into night, and Wayne was seen holding a meeting with Ninim and his bodyguards. She reports that Cavern generals named Levert and Holonui are planning an assassination attempt on him and are likely to attack him where he currently lives. He said that he understood Levert's goal.
Meanwhile, according to Wayne, Ortelas's goal is to control Natra's minds because Ortelas is starting to lose trust among the sacred elite. However, the plan went awry because the Natra kingdom managed to seize the Martin gold mine. It made Ortelas angry, and they started targeting Wayne. Afterward, Zeno was in the room and asked Wayne to take her to meet Ortelas the next day. She seems to be losing hope, as everyone in Cavern hates the Martin kingdom and tries to destroy it. Wayne suspects Zeno is planning to kill Ortelas, but she explains that she only wants to gain his trust and ally with the Natra kingdom. Fortunately, he was willing to accept her request as long as she promised not to kill Ortelas. He added that brandishing a sword during a discussion was the behavior of a savage. The next day, Wayne and Ortelas's meeting was held. This time, Ortelasi is accompanied by Holonui, who betrayed the Martin kingdom. Apparently, he was so happy to see Wayne gain such a favorable impression in the eyes of the sacred elite that he intended to marry Wayne to his daughter. But Ortelas added that he did not recognize his daughter because her daughter's intelligence and skills were not worthy of being a descendant of her. According to him, his children must be intelligent. Hearing that, Wayne smiled at that even though his heart felt disgusted at his attitude towards his daughter. Moreover, Ortelas asked for something that managed to make Wayne's blood boil. He asked Wayne to send slaves like Ninim to be sacrificed in the massacre tradition in his kingdom. Meanwhile, Wayne was silent, hearing him say vile things about his traditions. Then after he stopped talking, Wayne got angry and kicked him in the face while killing the doorman who entered the room. Soon Wayne's bodyguards secured the situation so that no one would enter there. It seemed that Wayne was fawning over his own words, saying that the person brandishing a sword during a discussion. He did that because Ortelas had dared to insult and even kill slaves like Ninim. He stabbed Ortelas in the chest, killing him instantly. After that, he gave Zeno a chance to kill Holonui, who looked scared. Hearing that, Holonui begged Wayne for mercy, but Zeno killed Holonui without mercy. Afterward, Wayne set fire to the meeting place building and fled from the cavern kingdom. Not long after, Wayne, Ninim, Zeno, and Wayne's bodyguards ride horses, and Ninim looks annoyed by Wayne's rash decision. Given that the person he killed was a member of the sacred elite and the king of the cavern kingdom, it meant that the Natra kingdom had to fight against the cavern kingdom and its allies. However, he didn't seem to say the real reason for killing Ortelas was to defend Ninim's own dignity. Soon after, Wayne explained his plan for dealing with the Cavern Kingdom and its allies. He seemed to be inviting the rest of the Martin Kingdom's troops into an alliance because he would definitely need the slightest reinforcements. But then Wayne complained because everything was complicated and troublesome, making Ninim even angrier at his behavior. She urged Wayne to tell the real reason he killed Ortelas. However, his bodyguard came to interrupt them. He reported that the evidence of Holonui's betrayal had been sent to the place Wayne ordered. Meanwhile, chaos erupts in the Calvern Kingdom, where the people burned down the officials' houses. There were rumors that General Levert killed King Ortelas because Levert wanted to coup Ortelas's power. General Levert seemed confused about the rumors. It turned out that evidence of Holonui and Levert's betrayal was sent by Wayne's bodyguards to one of the sacred elite members, Chedmilia. She could not help but support Wayne's actions and ordered her men to burn down the houses in the Calvern Kingdom. She informs him that he has been awaited by the Natra Rebellion troops trying to kill him at the border. Wayne said there was another way, namely through the mountain, but his bodyguard warned that landslides had blocked the road. He couldn't help but rack his brains to escape the situation. When he had an idea, he ordered his guards to move. On the other hand, it looks like Levert and his troops are on their way to chase Wayne. He received information from his scout squad that they found discarded items on the main road, with the possibility that Wayne's group would pass him. Levert was surprised, at first, why Wayne didn't go through the mountain road. But then Lever discovered that the mountain road had collapsed, and he ordered his troops to the main road. Actually, Levert's men had warned Levert that maybe this was a trap, because it is possible that Wayne took another detour so as not to be overtaken by them. However, Lever was not intelligent and alert, so he did not pay much attention to the warning. But moments later, they were met by hundreds of troops without a flag. Seeing that, Levert and his troops were confused because the troops in front of them did not have a clear identity. He thought the troops were natural rebel troops who were about to kill Wayne. But suddenly, a cavalry appeared, attacking them from behind, causing them to panic and run towards the Natra rebel troops in front of them. As a result, instead of ambushing Wayne's group, Natra's rebel troops fought against Levert's troops, forcing their way forward after being attacked from behind. It turned out it was all Wayne's strategy. All this time, he had been hiding in the ruins of the mountain road and had Zeno summon the rest of the Martin Kingdom's army and then attack Levert's army from behind. But his strategy didn't stop there because suddenly, a general of the Natra Kingdom's troops, Haggard, appeared from a distance. The news of Haggard's retirement was fake news that Wayne deliberately spread to lure Natra's rebellious aristocrats. As a result, he and the Natra Kingdom troops defeated Natra's rebel forces and Levert's troops at once. After that, Wayne returned to his kingdom. Wayne and Ninim have a special guest, namely Prince Martin. But when Prince Martin took off his war helmet, it turned out it was Zeno. She was the first daughter of the previous King of Martin. 
Her real name was Zenovia Martin, and she was the only descendant of the King of Martin who survived the invasion of the Cavern Kingdom. She said that she managed to reclaim the Martin capital because of the deaths of Ordelas and General Lever. Then, her purpose for coming to the Natra Kingdom was to swear allegiance to Wayne and ask for protection from the Natra Kingdom. Wayne, who heard this, was shocked and panicked. He was obviously lazy when he had to take care of the Martin Kingdom because even taking care of the Natra Kingdom was already making him dizzy. But then, Zeno seduced him by saying that she was just a woman who was not worthy of being the kingdom's leader. Time had passed, and the scene showed the view of the imperial capital. The matter regarding the seizure of the emperor's seat doesn't seem to be over yet. Lo, one of the four candidates for a successor to the emperor, is talking with the imperial mayor about holding an air conference, wherein the conference will invite three guests of honor where one of them is from the Natra Kingdom. After the meeting, Lo looked tired and lay down on the sofa. However, Brandel said that when the Natra Kingdom party arrived in the capital, Lo was excited to welcome Wayne and his entourage again. But Lo was a little surprised. At first, she thought that the representative of the Natra Kingdom who came was Wayne, but it turned out to be Felania, his sister. On the other hand, Wayne looked upset because he was worried about Felania's condition, even though Ninim and Nanaki were already accompanying her. The scene returns when Wayne holds a meeting with Natra officials. Originally, Wayne was invited to attend the Empire's invitation. However, because the Natra Kingdom was recovering from yesterday's war, it would be risky for him to leave the kingdom. On the other hand, some officials supported him to leave, as a great opportunity for the Natra Kingdom to expand the alliance. Seeing this, Felania volunteered to replace Wayne and went to fulfill the Empire's invitation. Everyone seemed surprised by her statement, although in the end, no one dared to reject the decision of the Natra Kingdom's princess. The next day, Felania and Ninim are on their way to the banquet. Ninim briefly explained Lo's position in the struggle for the Empire. So after successfully stopping the rebellion against the Empire at that time, Lo gained much support to become Emperor. But she didn't want to take the throne because she had no military backing. Therefore, she formed her own faction called the Patriot Faction, which contains influential people who care about the Empire's future. Lo positioned herself in the faction as a woman who sincerely worked without expecting a position. Not long after, Felania and Ninim arrived at the banquet. The nobles and officials there seemed amazed to see the graceful and dignified Felania. She received a warm welcome from Lo, then Lo invited her to be introduced to her three older brothers. On the other hand, Ninim looked worried seeing their closeness since the Netra kingdom had to be neutral and not side with any of the emperor candidates. Felania was introduced by Lo in the presence of her three older brothers, namely Demetrio, Bardloch, and Manfred. Felania turned out to have been told by Wayne about the nature of the three princes. The first is Prince Manfred, a person who likes to sugarcoat things. Therefore, he gets support from the province, which is lulled by his promise. The second is Prince Bardloch, the prince with the military's support and power. Then the last is the eldest son, Prince Demetrio, who is arguably the most stupid of the four children of the emperor. He had support only because he was the eldest child. Demetrio seemed to underestimate Felania and couldn't believe that the Natra Kingdom had sent a child like her to attend the imperial banquet. Lo intervened and explained that the Natra Kingdom was in a state of recovery, and Wayne was busy managing his kingdom. However, it was different with Demetrio. Bardloch and Manfred actually seemed to be fighting over the position to be able to talk and get to know Felania, the reason being that they could get support from the Natra Kingdom. Ninim, alert to the situation, whispered to her to get out of there, then she grabbed Lo to be the reason for leaving there. Shortly after, Ninim praised Felania for her hard work, but she was still worried that she might have done something wrong and might disappoint Wayne. Then, Ninim left for a while and asked Nanaki to look after Felania. As it turned out, Ninim went to meet Lo and asked what her purpose was for asking to meet. Lo again said she wanted Natra Kingdom's support in the struggle for the current Emperor's seat. However, Ninim insisted that the Natra Kingdom would be neutral, according to what Wayne had ordered her to do. Lo and Ninim had an argument over this. The scene then shifts. It looks like the four Emperor candidates are in the same room to start the Imperial Conference. The next morning, Felania was seen walking around accompanied by the mayor of the imperial capital and arrived at a people's assembly building. It was seen that the representatives of the people from various regions of the empire were discussing to the point of arguing to determine the policy of the empire. She seemed interested in seeing this and wanted to learn about the things in that place. On the other hand, Demetrio looks furious because his siblings don't appreciate him being the eldest child. Moreover, he was still annoyed by the attitude of the Natra Kingdom, who sent a small child to attend the empire's invitation. But suddenly, he got a sneaky idea to reply to Wayne's attitude. Demetrio came to meet Felania, who happened to be with Lo. Without further ado, he stated his wish to make Felania his wife. His words had surprised everyone there, even Felania herself starting to tremble. He added that their marriage would strengthen the Empire's and Natra Kingdom's relationship. Felania and Ninim clearly didn't believe his words and knew that there was an ulterior motive behind them. Felania said she would think first, but Demetrio forced her to answer right then and there. Lo warned him not to force Felania, but he ignored her warning. 
He told Lo to shut up and said that this marriage would benefit both kingdoms, so there was no reason to worry. There, Demetrio's bad intentions towards Felania can be seen if she wants to become his wife. However, Felania, who had learned a lot of valuable things while visiting the People's Assembly, could answer out loud. She says she really appreciates his offer, but the royal family's marriage is a political matter and she shouldn't decide on her own. Demetrio was angry at being rejected and threatened to destroy Natra if he ascended the throne to become emperor. But suddenly, Wayne appeared to interrupt him. At first, Wayne didn't know the conversation going on there and just wanted to interrupt. Only then did Ninim tell him in a small note. After that, he seemed to wonder what Demetrio's real intentions were. He tried to understand the situation while looking for a way out. However, Demetrio asked Wayne to decide about his marriage to Felania. Wayne seems to have got the idea, and he replied that he agreed with the marriage. He continued explaining that marriage would make the relationship between the Empire and the Natra Kingdom closer, but his answer clearly took Falea by surprise. It turns out he went back to discussing his engagement plans with Lo and took Demetrio by surprise. Demetrio, who originally wanted to make Wayne and the Natra Kingdom suffer, obviously didn't want Wayne to benefit from marrying Lo with his status as a candidate for Emperor. His annoyance grew when Lo, who understood the situation, helped Wayne discuss their engagement. Even the stupid Demetrio didn't realize that he was being used by Wayne. Demetrio said he did not approve of Lo's engagement, but she denied it and said he had no right to it. Ninim said that the nobles of Natra should not marry the same family. Wayne finally ended the topic with the excuse that it was too late, and Demetrio agreed. Apparently, Demetrio had abandoned his intention to marry Felania because he didn't want the Natra kingdom to profit from marrying two future emperors. After Demetrio and Lo left the room, Felania hugged Wayne and thanked him for saving her from the situation earlier. It was getting late, and Felania had gone to bed. Wayne was seen talking to Ninim. There, he said that Natra Kingdom's condition was safe, but he was still curious about the movements of the sacred elites. He added that he heard about the sacred elites planning something in a country, but then he looked unsteady and almost fainted. It turned out that he was a little tired and lacked sleep. Ninim looked worried too, but Wayne insisted that he was fine. After that, she handed over a letter from Lo containing an invitation to meet in secret tonight. The scene moved and showed Wayne, who came to meet Lo at the promised place. She had asked him to meet to seek advice on his plans to seize the Imperial seat, because the Imperial conference held earlier turned out to be a failure and was fruitless. But Wayne doesn't seem to have any solution for Lo. He added that Lo is on the right path because the people now love her. She finally decided to leave, but she continued emphasizing that she would still involve Wayne and Ninim in her struggle. The following day, Prince Manfred received a report from his men that Wayne had arrived. His men said that Wayne was scheduled to meet with Demetrio the next day. He seemed to praise Wayne's ability, but suddenly, he instructs Demetrio to kill Wayne later. Manfred seems afraid that Wayne's abilities will become a serious threat if he becomes the new emperor. The next day, Wayne and Demetrio's meeting was held. He was seen on his way to Demetrio's residence accompanied by Ninim. Wayne, who looked exhausted, asked where Felania was. Ninim explained that Felania was studying at the People's Assembly. Her presence has been accepted by the people there, and she is allowed to speak her mind. Wayne arrived and was greeted by Demetrio. Inside, he wondered what Demetrio wanted to talk about. Is it about marriage or diplomatic relations with the Natra Kingdom? Before the conversation started, it seemed he was served a glass of tea by a maid. But Wayne looked suspicious and told the maid to drink the tea she brought. However, the maid seemed nervous and reasoned not to drink the tea, so he continued to force her. Suddenly, Demetrio interrupted and called Wayne stupid and disrespectful. Because he refused the dishes, the host served. He suspected all kinds of things. Demetrio then grabbed his teacup and was about to drink it. Wayne seemed to stop Demetrio, but he was late because Demetrio had already drunk the tea. Sure enough, a few moments later, Demetrio vomited blood and passed out while the maid serving the tea ran away. Ninim seemed to be chasing after him, but Wayne restrained her and told her to look for Demetrio's healer. He said that right now, Demetrio's safety was more important. After the incident, Wayne was detained and interrogated for several days because he was suspected of being the one who poisoned Demetrio. He was seen talking to Ninim after finishing his interrogation. He explains that Demetrio survived and returned to his domain, but his two brothers believe that the culprit came from Mealstars, the city where the Emperor's conference was held. As a result, Manfred and Bardloch surrounded Mealstars city with the Imperial military forces. Even Felania helped Lo and the mayor of Mealstars to stabilize the city's situation while Wayne intends to return to the Natra Kingdom to avoid the conflict in the city. But then, Wayne's bodyguard came and reported the appearance of the Levethian flag troop led by Kedmilia, advancing towards the city. It seemed they had come to liberate Mealstar City from the pressure of the Empire that was about to attack. Hearing this, he panicked and was furious at Kedmilia because he found it difficult to leave the city. Ninim added if Mealstar City had a war going on, it would be impossible for Mealstar City's guardians to handle it. Suddenly, Wayne lost consciousness. It seemed that he was physically and mentally tired due to the situation's pressure. 
He was lying and unconscious, accompanied by Felania and Ninim. Felania was worried about his condition, so she decided to go to the People's Assembly to cast her vote. She did it solely to help her older brother ease the tension within Maelstar's city. Shortly after, Felania arrived at the People's Assembly. The situation seemed chaotic. On one side, some wanted to join Levithia's army, on the other side, some wanted to join the Empire. She walked to the center of the room and began to give a speech to convey her opinion. She advised the People's Assembly to unite their minds in deciding which path they would choose for the good of Maelstar City. She was sure that the residents of Maelstar City, mostly merchants, must have the right thoughts. All eyes were on her. Those who had been rioting because of different opinions were instantly amazed by her speech. On the other hand, Wayne, who has woken up and made Ninim, hugs her. She cried and asked him not to push himself. A few moments later, Felania returned to meet Wayne, who had woken up. He praised Felania's extraordinary actions in the People's Assembly when he was still not awake. But she was humble and offered what else she could do to help him. Wayne looked quite surprised to see Felania's rapid development. Even her noble aura was visible. Then, he ordered her to continue giving speeches encouraging the residents of Mealstar City. Not only that, but she led the 30,000 residents of Mealstar City to ask for help from Levethia's troops. On the other hand, Cadmilia was surprised because she didn't have enough resources to accommodate Mealstar City's 30,000 residents. But suddenly, Wayne appeared and offered to help her. The scene then shows Cadmilia and King Gruyere of the Saugus Kingdom leading Levithia's army. Apparently, the 30,000 residents of Mealstar City had managed to evacuate the city safely. Wayne, appointed by the mayor of Mealstars as the representative of Mealstars, expressed his gratitude for their help. He asks about their plans for the future. Cadmilia replies that they will deploy troops to expel the Imperial princes and liberate Mealstar City. But Wayne said they didn't want to trouble Levithia's army any further. He wanted to retake the city with the Mealstars' own hands. He continued to say they wanted to buy weapons and armor from Levithia at three times the normal price. Then if later they managed to reclaim Mealstar City, the mayor of Mealstars would build a temple to honor Levithia's religion. Cadmilia looked amazed by Wayne's strategy, but she planned to refuse his offer simply because she wanted to see how far his abilities were. On the other hand, Gruyere agreed to his offer, because Gruyere was known as a king who was crazy about money. Hearing that, she couldn't refuse Gruyere's decision. The following day, the residents of Mealstars are already wearing battle gear from Levethia. They move to fight the armies of the two future emperors surrounding their city. This made Bardlotch panic because he did not want to kill the townspeople who were very precious to him. It was because the Empire still needed Mealstar City, the largest trading city on the continent, to become business partners. On the other hand, Wayne and Lowe looked at the Mealstars from the top of the hill. He looked pleased to see Bardlotch's doubts. He told Lowe to ask her two older brothers to negotiate. In the end, negotiations between the two Imperial Princes and the Mayor of Mealstars took place. Wayne was there as the representative of Mealstars. In that meeting, his genius was again seen. Wayne told Bardlotch and Manfred that he knew who was behind the plot to kill Demetrio. Wayne explained the only person who could do that, someone who could outsmart the prince's personal guards, even breaking through the tight security of the city. He said that the culprit was Demetrio himself, but Bardlotch rejected his accusations and asked what the reason was if Demetrio did that. Wayne replied that Demetrio deliberately pitted Mealstar City against the Imperial troops led by Bardlotch and Manfred. When the Mealstars and Imperial troops were exhausted, Demetrio would deploy his troops to attack Bardlotch and Manfred. He explained that the Emperor's throne would fall into Demetrio's hands. Bardlotch and Manfred realized that Wayne wanted to put all the blame on Demetrio, so they had no reason to raid Mealstars. Neither of them was able to deny it either. The mayor of Mealstars added that he would not mind the actions of Bardlotch and Manfred, who had surrounded the city. In fact, Mealstars are willing to compensate for the incident that happened to Demetrio in their city. Manfred, who was the real culprit, realized that he couldn't refuse Wayne. Moreover, his accusation indirectly made Demetrio eliminated from the candidate for emperor candidate. Finally, the conflict ended, and the residents returned to the city. However, it seems that the residents are already anti-princes and are now more inclined to support Lo's rise to emperor, even though she admits that the hearts of the residents already belong to someone else, namely Felania. The mayor acknowledged that he said that Wayne wanted to help Mealstar City because of Felania, because Felania likes Mealstar City with the People's Assembly and its government. Meanwhile, at the Natra Kingdom Palace, Wayne looks very happy because their economy is growing rapidly, especially in the export sector. This is because he collaborates with Mealstar City. Ninim explained that the Marden Kingdom was in good shape. She looked worried they might try to free themselves from the Natra Kingdom if its economy had accelerated. She advised Wayne to find a bigger business partner to avoid being left behind by the Marden Kingdom. A few moments later, Wayne's bodyguard appeared and reported that Wayne received an invitation from Gruyere to come to the Solgast Kingdom. He agreed to the invitation and planned to visit Marden first. On the other hand, Zenovia was informed by her advisor that Wayne would come to visit. 
She tried to guess the purpose of his arrival, perhaps to discuss the future of the Martin Kingdom, which was a state of the Natra Kingdom. Zenovia's advisor further suggests asking the Natra Kingdom for a reward for Martin's economic progress, which has come down to advancing Natra. The reward given by Zenovia's advisor is to ask Zenovia to become Wayne's wife so that Martin and Natra's relationship is closer and inseparable. Not long after, Wayne and Ninim were on their way to the Martin Kingdom. There, she asked Zenovia about Wayne's decision on her wedding plans. Wayne replied that he still wanted to be single. He explained that his goal was to go to the Martin Kingdom to ask whether the cooperation between Martin and Natra would still be continued or not. Wayne arrived and was warmly greeted by Zenovia. He was embarrassed to see Zenovia in sexy clothes. She continued to entertain him for dinner, where she said they got protests from the Delunio Kingdom for their export products. According to Zenovia, the Delunio Kingdom is a conservative company and doesn't like it when foreign products enter their kingdom. Hearing that, Wayne asked her not to worry because the Delunio Kingdom had just lodged a protest and had not yet sent their representatives here. Besides, Wayne had actually been waiting for a wedding invitation from Zenovia. However, until dinner was over, she didn't discuss the wedding plans. He looked annoyed and grumbled in front of Ninim but he was still sure that Zenovia would ask him to marry tomorrow when they were going around the city. The next day, Wayne and Ninim met Zenovia. Zenovia was dressed in the same military dress as when she first met Wayne. Apparently, she was playing the role of Zeno, the military leader, and not as Zenovia, the kingdom leader. Shortly after, Zenovia took Wayne and Ninim around the city until, in the afternoon, she took them to a bronze statue that had just been finished. She explained that the statue was a form of hope for peace and prosperity for the citizens of the Martin Kingdom. Then, Wayne slightly provoked Zenovia that the Martin Kingdom would definitely remain stable and prosperous, perhaps even be able to free itself from the Natra Kingdom. But it seems that she was not provoked and said that the Martin Kingdom will continue to advance even though it continues to be part of the Natra Kingdom. This made Wayne feel confident that the Martin Kingdom would not betray his kingdom. Wayne, Ninim, and Zenovia rested in the city park for a while. There, Zenovia asked why Wayne kept his distance from the people a little. However, his answer instantly informed her of his capacity as a royal leader. It made her discouraged from planning a wedding with him, because Zenovia feels that she doesn't deserve to be his wife, who is far above her. The scene moved and showed Zenovia, who received a report from her bodyguard that Sirgis, the Prime Minister of Delunio Kingdom, had come to her kingdom. Then, she welcomed him. It turned out that his purpose in coming was to protest against Natra and the Martin Kingdom over their export policy. Afterward, he insisted that he could speak to Wayne, who was in Martin. Hearing that, Zenovia looked annoyed because she felt belittled by Sirgis, but suddenly Wayne appeared and asked about his needs. Finally, Wayne and Sirgis began to discuss. Sirgis seemed to object to the products that Natra sold, because, according to him, these products are not under Levithia's religious teachings. However, Wayne pretended not to know about it and answered his complaint casually. Feeling his complaint was not heard, Sirgis was angry and decided to leave. But before leaving, he said he would not forget Wayne and Zenovia's treatment of him. The next day, Wayne and Ninim are about to leave for the Solgus Kingdom. Zenovia said goodbye and received a message from him to stay alert to Sirgis, because he was sure that Sirgis would not remain silent after yesterday's incident. A while later, Wayne and Ninim finally arrived at Biska, the capital of the Solgus Kingdom, a port city that has beautiful sea views. Their arrival was warmly welcomed by Gruyé. Then, he invited Wayne to the hall for a banquet. Soon after, Gruyé's servant lifted Gruyé's palanquin, which surprised Wayne. Gruyé explained that nobles would appear powerful if they did things commoners couldn't. Finally, he walked beside Gruyé's palanquin while being surprised by Gruyé's mindset. Even so, Wayne still felt happy to see the situation with the Solgust Kingdom, because he thought that if Gruyé invited him to come, it would definitely be to discuss the cooperation between Natra and Solgust. He felt that if Natra cooperated with Solgust, the Delunio Kingdom would not dare mess with him. Arriving at the hall, Wayne was surprised by the presence of a girl whose hair color was the same as Gruyé's. Apparently, she was Gruyé's daughter named Torchelia. She wanted to meet Wayne. She even offered to explain all the food that would be served. Knowing that he seemed friendly and responded to Torchelia, he remained focused on his goal of getting Gruyé to cooperate. Unfortunately, Wayne failed to stay focused, because the food served tastes really delicious and makes him addicted. The scene shows Wayne, who looks full in his room. He looks annoyed with himself for failing to make a deal with Gruyé. The next day, Wayne tried to meet Gruyé to discuss a cooperation agreement. However, Gruyé seemed to have avoided it most of the day. So, at night, he talked with Ninim and felt Gruyé's attitude was suspicious. He thought that Gruyé might try to kill him. Because there was no other reason, Gruyé summoned himself to the Solgus Kingdom other than to cooperate. Then, Wayne told Ninim to get ready to go home as soon as possible. However, Gruyé instead called Wayne to talk about an important matter. Afterward, he went straight to Gruyé, but they still felt wary. He was afraid that it was just a trap for Gruyé to kill him. But then Gruyé invited Ninim to sit down. 
He knew Ninim was a slave, but he didn't seem to mind. This surprised Wayne and Ninim. Grue then explained that Levithia's teachings were limited to books, and he didn't really care about it. Hearing Gruyé's words, Wayne and Ninim finally relaxed their guard. He felt that Gruyé was a different king with an open mind. Afterward, he finally expressed his intention to establish a cooperative relationship with the Solgus kingdom. Gruyé agreed with the cooperative relationship, even he allowed Wayne to return to Natra. Gruyé added that the details regarding their cooperation would be sent later. Wayne and Ninim still looked confused by Gruyé's good attitude, but they decided to say goodbye to return to the Natra kingdom. However, after the two of them left, there seemed to be Sirgas watching from the other side. As it turned out, Gruyé and Sirgas had teamed up beforehand. Gruyé felt that Wayne would only be a hindrance to his kingdom, so he intended to bring down Wayne and the Natra kingdom. Not long after, Wayne returned to his palace. Ninim reported that the Marden kingdom was fighting against the Delunio kingdom at the border. She added that the letter of cooperation between Solgust and Natra had not been sent until now. Finally, he realized that he was only being played by Grue, because his departure to the Solgust kingdom made the Delunio kingdom take the opportunity to fight against the Marden kingdom. Wayne looked so annoyed when he realized that. Moreover, Delunio kingdom has the support of the Solgust kingdom. They will be ready to help if the battle against the Marden kingdom goes hard. After that, Zenovia came to see Wayne and apologized for her mistake. She reported that she was forced to send an envoy to the Delunio Kingdom to offer a peace treaty to end the war. At first, Zenovia thought that Wayne would be angry with her decision, but apparently, he actually supports her decision. He added that he would soon turn things around. Soon afterward, Wayne and Zenovia were on their way to the Delunio Kingdom. He guessed that the Delunio Kingdom was deliberately going to war with the Marden Kingdom, so the Solgus Kingdom would come into conflict with the Natra Kingdom because then, the Delunio Kingdom would easily reclaim their disputed territory with the support of the Solgust Kingdom. After hearing that, Zenovia seemed doubtful that their planned discussion with Sirgis would work, but Wayne calmed her down and said he had something to persuade Sirgis. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Gruyé and the Solgust Kingdom's military forces were on their way to attack the Natra Kingdom. He seemed eager to confront Wayne and kill him. Unfortunately, when Gruyé and his army met with the Natra Kingdom's troops, he didn't see Wayne's presence there. He thought that maybe Wayne was currently persuading the Delunio kingdom to make peace, but he was sure that Sirgis would not be easily persuaded by Wayne. Unexpectedly, Gruyé, who had a fat body and initially looked like a lazy king, seemed so good at playing his spear and trounced the Natra kingdom troops. As a result, all of the Natra kingdom troops that had ambushed him were downed by Gruyé alone. However, he looked like he was waiting for what plan Wayne might think. On the other hand, Wayne and Zenovia had arrived at the Delunio kingdom and were greeted by Sirgis. They continued to discuss with Zenovia, who started talking about the peace treaty. She added that she is ready to return the disputed territory of Danulio and Marden twice as much. But as it turned out, Sirgis rejected her offer, because it turns out that his goal of making Solgus and Natra go to war is so that he can become a member of the sacred elite. So for Sirgis, the Marden kingdom was just a small excuse to smooth his stride. Moreover, Sirgis was a bad follower of Levithia, so if he can become a member of the sacred elite, then the Delunio kingdom can become a holy kingdom. Even he intended to hand over the territory of the Delunio kingdom to Levithia. But Wayne intervened when he saw Zenovia's failed plan. He threatened Sirgis with clothing products from Natra that the Delunio residents buy. Wayne said that the dye for clothes came from very toxic material. Shortly after, Wayne explained that the poison in the clothes would spread little by little. Then later, the poison will slowly kill the entire population. This will lead to rumors of a plague appearing in the Delunio kingdom. He continued to explain that chaos was imminent and that the residents would try to leave the Delunio kingdom. So when it happened, Wayne planned to take 800,000 Natra Kingdom residents to flee to the Delunio Kingdom, because he admitted that the Natra Kingdom could not fight the Solgust Kingdom and chose to flee. Sirgis didn't believe Wayne's explanation. He had doubts about the presence of poison in the clothes. Suddenly, a servant came to report the results of the war to Sirgis. He said that the Natra Kingdom's troops had withdrawn from the front line while the Solgust Kingdom's troops continued to pursue the Natra Kingdom. Sirgis was panicked and thought that Wayne would evacuate the inhabitants to the Delunio Kingdom. At the same time, the natives of the Delunio Kingdom died of poisoning from clothes from the Natra Kingdom. Wayne looked pleased to see the panic on Sirga's face. He continued to say that he had the antidote. In fact, he had deliberately ordered the Natra Kingdom troops to retreat to support his lie to Sirgis. Finally, the depressed Sirgis gave up on Wayne and agreed to cooperate with him to kill Grue. Then he ordered Sirgis to order the Delunio Kingdom's troops to attack the Solgus Kingdom's troops from behind. It turned out that the Solgus Kingdom had far superior troops than the Natra Kingdom. In fact, they continued to pound the Natra Kingdom's troops, who had retreated into their fortress. Seeing the situation, Hagard, the Natra Kingdom's war general, predicts that if it takes a little longer, the Natra Kingdom's troops will surely lose. But Ninim, who saw Wayne from a distance, said that this battle was not over yet. 
the Delunio Kingdom's troops had moved and were preparing to attack the Salgas Kingdom from behind. Meanwhile, the Natra Kingdom troops who had been defending had decided to attack and repulse the front line from the Salgas Kingdom's troops. Rue seemed to laugh with satisfaction when he knew Wayne's cunning plan. He did not think that Wayne could persuade Sirgis. Afterward, the general of the Salgas Kingdom's army advised Gruyer to withdraw from the battle. But his proposal was clearly rejected by Gruyer, who already wanted to kill Wayne, and he chose to attack the Delunio Kingdom's troops back. However, when preparing to break through the Delunio Kingdom's army, Wayne suddenly appeared from the top of the cliff and took him by surprise. Unfortunately, Gruyer still had the strength and could knock out General Hagard and the captains of the troops who tried to ambush him. But it didn't stop there. Ninim appeared from behind General Hagard, jumped at Gruyer, and slashed him. In the end, Gruyer fell instantly at Ninim's hands. Seeing Gruyer lose, the Salgat's kingdom troops withdrew from the battle. Indicates that the victor of the war is the Natra kingdom. Not long after, Wayne meeting Gruyer. After being defeated by Ninim, he was taken prisoner by the Natra kingdom. But Wayne looks surprised to see Gruyer's body turning emaciated. It turns out, Gruyer can turn thin if he is seriously injured or exhausted. Then without further ado, he asked Wayne when he would be executed. However, Wayne denied this. He had no intention of executing Gruyer. Then, Wayne continued to say that Gruyer could go home if willing to sign a cooperation agreement between the Salgas Kingdom and the Natra Kingdom. But he refused and chose to die solely so that the Natra Kingdom would fight against Levithia. Gruyer did that because he wanted to see the frustrated face of Wayne, who was having difficulty dealing with Levithia's troops. Wayne looked annoyed with Gruyer's answer. But suddenly, he said he wanted to sign a cooperation agreement as long as Wayne expressed his passion, because he was so curious about Wayne's true passion and true attitude. Finally, Wayne agreed. Wayne said something that made Gruyer look surprised with a sweaty face. After that, he laughed with satisfaction at Wayne's words and finally agreed to sign a cooperation agreement. The scene then changed to showing Wayne, who seemed to be asleep from exhaustion after doing royal business. Ninim just smiled at him. When he woke up, Ninim reported the losses that the Natra Kingdom had suffered from yesterday's war. She added that the Natra Kingdom was seen as bad for fighting a member of the sacred elite of the Levethian religion, thus reducing the number of pilgrims crossing Marden. Not only that, but she said that all of Natra Kingdom's surplus and profits were reduced to cover the losses from yesterday's war. After hearing all that, Wayne was frustrated and thought about selling his kingdom again, as shown at the story's beginning. And finally, the anime ended. Many moral messages are presented in this anime, one of them is always done by Wayne, which is to always think before acting. He always thought through every plan and strategy carefully before starting his action, and because of that, he brought glory to his kingdom.